Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We have as our guest, again, the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Hawaii, who is a medical doctor and a leader, and a leader in helping us understand and combat coronavirus. And I thought that because of his interest and involvement in this issue, we ought to have him back. So this program is Coronavirus Part 2, where are we and what's happening now? Welcome, Lieutenant Governor. We appreciate you taking time from your very busy schedule to be with us today. I understand you actually came out of a meeting right yes. now with about 40 of the leading citizens of Hawaii discussing this issue. If you can, can you brief us on what was going on at the meeting? Yes, Governor. Th thank you very, very much for giving this opportunity. Uh, there's a lot to share. Let's dive right in. Uh, we currently have two individuals, two, that have tested positive for COVID-19. That's what we're calling this coronavirus. Coronavirus disease, that's the D. What, what are you calling it again? Uh, COVID-19. COVID COVID? COVID, and that's their, COVID that's the 19. short form, yes. And so COVID-19 for 2019 when it started. We have two cases now. One of them is in uh, a very sick state over at the hospital. Uh, it's at Kaiser, and we have another individual who's recovering, but we've had just these two cases. Now, having said that, we've had a lot of concern in the recent days because, as we know, there's been concern about individuals that were sick on cruise ships, and then they came to our islands and traveled in each different island. We've got a lot of individuals returning because it's spring break from Seattle, Washington, and across the country. We've done a good job with our Department of Health following all of the leads that exist out there. And that's been one of the many reasons why we've been able to keep our disease count to just two. And we've also not had any community spread. In other words, uh, an individual like me, if I were sick, spreads it to my wife or someone else that I work with. What do you do when you find somebody with this virus, like these two individuals? What, what, what happens? Or if uh, somebody new comes up with some symptom? Great question. So if someone is very sick, they stay in the hospital in isolation. We have rooms that they circulate the air to a special filter and then out of the building so that there's no chance of spreading anything that they breathe or sneeze or cough in that, in that room or into the ventilation. So we, put, we have 166 of those beds statewide. We put them in isolation and then we give them help with their breathing. There's no antibiotic that works on a virus, so we give them the best supportive care that we can. A lot of people, 80% of the people that go, get COVID-19 are having very mild symptoms, just like runny nose, cold symptoms, a little bit like the flu. Those individuals can be at their home. They can be at home and recover, and if they get sicker, we take them into the hospital. But there is a third group, and that is if people are travelers to Hawaii and they don't have a home, we don't want them to go stay at hotels and spread it at the hotel. And if people are homeless, they're similarly in that same category. We don't want them walking around Waikiki or other places sick, spreading through sneezing and coughing and touching people with their hands that are infected, the disease. So we will have to have some quarantine capacity to help people out. And for that, the uh, Department of Defense is working with DMAT, those folks that do uh, emergency preparedness to get us several small quarantine spots just in case. So these quarantine spots are already established and there's a protocol that the state is following. If somebody, like if I feel or somebody feels like they have flu symptoms, I have already taken a flu shot. Yes. So, so I'm not supposed to have the kind that kind of symptoms, you know, right. supposedly. But if I feel I do, what do I do? Uh, where do I go? Who do I check with? Well, that's brilliant. Let's start you right from the top there, Gov. So if you feel sick, if you feel the classic symptoms of COVID-19, which are the following, fever is almost always the case. 88% of people will have some fever. People will have also shortness of breath or cough. Those are the top three. If you have those symptoms, which are very much like the flu, you need to call your health care provider. Go, but go through them again. So I want people to hear this. I, I really want them to understand it. You bet. The main symptoms are fever, number one, by far the highest. If you have a fever, you probably still have the flu, but let's just go down the list. Fever, cough, or shortness of breath. Those are the top three symptoms that COVID-19 patients have. Those are also very similar to what people have with the flu. So what will happen is, you feel this way, you've got the fever, you've got a cough, 
you maybe were in touch with somebody, so you're worried, oh my goodness, did I have a contact that had a risk of COVID-19? You call your doctor's office and they will say the following. We'd like to test you for the flu. We're gonna get you a test in a quiet place. We'll test you for the flu. If you have the flu, that's the end of it. You don't you, have- You can't have both. Right, you are not going to have both. Okay, good. Once in a blue moon on top of a blue moon, you get two of these viruses. So we don't worry about that. If you have the flu, you are fine. Now comes the tricky part. <laughs> you know, that doc, that's the first time in my entire life yes. that I've heard a doctor say that. Sorry, and it came out very naturally because <laughs> right now fantastic. I have no worries about the flu. If you've got the flu, we will watch over oh, you. Oh, I'd be so happy to have the flu instead of what you're talking about. Okay, we're going to have a flu situation. party at, at home with a, you know, covered up, okay? So you have the flu, you don't worry about COVID-19 anymore. You just get ready to be at home for a little while, drink your fluids, take Tylenol, you'll be okay. If you don't have the flu, but you have these symptoms still, then we're going to test you. Now, I have breaking news for you, Governor. Okay. Up until now, we had to go through a very rigorous process, right till now, where the Department of Health then has to use its very limited supply of testing to decide whether or not we can afford to test an individual out in the community at a doctor's office or at a clinic for COVID-19. So been there was an elaborate protocol to get a test. Correct. And it's been a protocol. At first, you had to come from those countries like China, Korea, Italy, Iran, and also have these symptoms, like I just told you, right? Fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Then they would test you. But if you didn't have that travel history, they would not test you, and they would not consider you at risk. That's changed. That changed a week ago today with the CDC, because as we know, sadly, a lot of people are having the condition because they've caught it perhaps from being on a cruise ship or, or running into somebody from a cruise ship or running into someone from a cruise ship or being in Seattle where there was a surge of cases or in New York and so on. So that went out the window. So now it's just down to these symptoms. But even then they were concerned that there would be a run on the tests. So you had to basically be in deep trouble at the hospital and then they would make the determination whether to test you. That left a lot of people out, a lot of people that had minor symptoms, but they wanted to know why? We'll get to this in a moment. You don't want to have the symptoms, even if you're a pretty healthy 50 year old or younger and you have the symptoms, sure, you're going to do fine. You're not going to die of it. But if I go and visit my tutu, right. I could kill her and that's oh not God. going to be okay. So the point being is that now starting tomorrow, we will be able to go to clinical labs and if with the doctor's uh, recommendation, a doctor's note, they will be able you to- You mean this is the same place where we could go to get a blood test? Correct. Correct. Okay. What they're going to actually ask us to do is as doctors do the swab and call clinical labs. So we will be able to do the swab. It's a, it's a swab that goes into your nose. It takes a couple right. seconds, whoop, take it out. It's no joy, but it's fine, believe me. And then a couple days later, you'll get your result. In another week from now, we'll be able to do it totally here and get it in the same day. But the good news is we will now have the capacity. This is new. This is new. This is breaking. This is something that everybody ought to know that wasn't available, what, an hour ago? That's that, right. As far as people is concerned. Starting tomorrow morning, our private labs will begin to have this capacity. And before a couple days pass, all of the following, Kaiser, the DLS, that's our lab, and um, the third lab is... Uh, Clinical Labs. Clinical Labs of Hawaii. Thank right. you, Gov. So all three will be able to run the test. And that is very, very important because it will help our Department of Health do what they do best. They can do the epidemiology. They can take care of people. They can do the studies on this stuff. Meanwhile, the healthcare providers and the clinics and the hospitals can do what they do best, which is test, screen, take care of lots of people and get an idea how many cases we might actually have running around. Now, this is not... I, I, we should caution people, though, at least at this time, while this availability is exciting news and very important for the people of Hawaii, this is not an invitation for everybody that might not even have a symptom, but who feels insecure to dash down there and, and, and try to get a test of some kind. You're right, Gov. That's actually a very good point. We still want it to be clinically based. So we will still want someone's doctor or nurse practitioner or physician assistant to call in the test or, or give us a prescription for the test and the lab slip. That's very important because if you don't have any symptoms, I can tell you right now, you will test negative. That's the way it is because it's a DNA test. And so when you test and you are just not having symptomatic stuff, like your nose isn't running, you're not having the fever, you're not having the cough, 
it's going to be negative, the head of the CDC told me, and that is gospel. So much better to only be tested if you have the symptoms. What your doctor or nurse is going to do is they're going to then test you to make sure you don't have the flu. Again, you could happily go on your way with the flu, or if that's negative, then we test you. And so that will help us really describe what we're dealing with in the state of Hawaii so we can move on to some of the other important things like knowing who should or shouldn't go to events, which events we should or shouldn't cancel. We will know better whether we've had any transmission in our state. We'll know how to deal with our long-term care facilities. We've had to have the testing set up in order to get to the place where we can act. Wow, that's fantastic. You know, I, I'm so glad that you are here. Now, let's, let's, let's uh, say uh, you seem to imply that this is just the beginning, though. There'll be, as a week from now, we may even have, the, these tests might even be more available than they are currently. You actually read my mind, Gov, I, I, I mean that. So I'm in discussions also with some of our emergency management folks where as another week passes, we may decide, okay, it's good to get more broad testing. We might open, for instance, and this is being done in, in certain cities, we might open a small tent clinic, perhaps over on the parking lot at Jabsom, where we can set up the clinic. We have this facility already, taxpayers paid for it, and we man it with, say, six to eight people, and then once again, a doctor or nurse can direct someone to come in and maybe they're less symptomatic. Maybe they just came back from Seattle and they want to make very certain that this runny nose they've got is not COVID-19 because they're on spring break and they are going to be with their family and they're going to see their grandfather or grandmother over at the nursing home. We want to be very safe for people. And the way to be safe for people is to have certainty. So that's another thing we're thinking about. We would likely do it for all of the neighbor islands. I do know that one of my private practitioner friends is going to set up a special clinic this Saturday. Uh, once this whole protocol is in place so that they can test a lot of people. So we are ramping this up very, very uh, significantly and in real time because keep in mind, we just a week ago, we were talking and there were like 85,000 cases. Now there's 111,000 cases. We're up to 3,888 global deaths and th you know the numbers keep going up. Now keep in mind this, this disease, this disease right now has, like I said, 111,000 cases. Globally, we've probably already had 300 million cases of the flu. 300 million versus 111,000. And by the end of the whole flu season, we may be at four or 500 million cases of the flu. And we might only reach 200,000 cases of COVID-19. However, the COVID-19 virus is more lethal and it's particularly bad for individuals over 75. 8% of people over 75 are dying from this, and actually 14.4% of all individuals over 80 are dying from COVID-19. Well, those are huge percentages. You know, we're gonna take a short break now, Lieutenant Governor, and we'll be right back. And maybe you can tell us uh, how we ought to behave uh, during this period as well. You bet. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Lillian Cumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor, and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to our talk story with John Waihe'e and our guest, the Lieutenant Governor of Hawaii, Josh Green, who is the, I guess, the center point of our efforts to deal with uh, and get past this whole coronavirus 
something 19 scare. COVID-19. That's COVID-19. Right, COVID-19. Thank yeah. you, Lieutenant Governor. You know, I am like, I am actually, this is one of the few shows where I can honestly tell our uh, viewers out there that I am as concerned as they are about what you're about to say uh, during the entire time that you were on. So I want to get back into the conversation. I want where we have all these tests in Hawaii. Yes. Where they come? Where did they come from? I mean, who's doing it, and how do we know that they actually know what they're doing? That's a very, very good question. So. The, right now, the only people up until today that we've been using the test from is from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control out of Washington, well, really out of Georgia. And that test has long been vetted and they had to work it out. We had some problems out of the gate. They sent us broken tests, but it finally got fixed and now we've been testing people. So they, they initially, they, the tests weren't necessarily effective like they ought to have been. That's right. They didn't give us authorizations to do the tests adequately and it was a problem and it really set us back. It hamstrung the Department of Health. So we didn't know in every state, including ours, whether or not we were experiencing cases of COVID-19. So that was a big problem. It finally got resolved over a week ago so we can do a small number of tests on our sickest people. That's what we've been doing. But we have to test more broadly because like I said earlier in the show, we have to have reassurance. We have to know whether or not a person can go back to work, whether they can work at the hospital. All of these questions are taken care of by getting the test result. If you're negative, you're fine. You may have a cold or the flu but you don't have to worry about this somewhat life-threatening COVID-19. Now, where do the tests come from? Well, they come, come, come from all over the country, from the private sector. Oh, so we now have private sector people producing yes. the tests. And they'll be producing millions and millions of these tests. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think that these companies are, you know, they're, they're part of the capitalistic system and they're trying to get their tests out, but they have to go through a rigorous process, approval by the FDA, and then they have to, in our labs, get kind of teed up and tested so that we see that we get an accurate result. When we get the accurate result over the course of a couple days, then we can test widely and we can do tests like if someone is sick, God forbid, in, in Mililani or Kau, instead of telling them, sorry, you're not sick enough, sorry, you didn't travel to Iran or Italy or, or South Korea, we can actually just test them and let them go on with their lives. You know, Lieutenant Governor, the, the thing about that is uh, it, it does, it would, a test would give the patient some security yes. for, for themselves, but it also gives their neighbors security. Yeah. I mean, it's good to know that anybody that feels like they need it or have some hint of the system will be tested. Yes, and, and, and it's not just your neighbor down the street, you know, down on a Lee Highway or whatever. It's also your neighbor in the workplace, the neighbor that's working in the cubicle next to you. It's your neighbor that you share your bathroom with. It's your neighbor in the dorm room. It's your neighbor when you go to Starbucks. It's your neighbor in all of our Ohana. I, I have to confess, I, I now go, when I go and use the restroom, yes. I, I, I don't like opening the door. <laughs> Yeah, see, it gets psychologically into your skin, right? And then you see yeah. someone else touching their nose and you think that person shouldn't have touched their nose and then they yeah, hug me. And I, they, I know exactly yeah. what, how that feels like. That's right. So it's about reassurance. A large part of what I'm doing and, and my coordination part for the Gov, just so you know, is to coordinate the healthcare component of it. They have a ton of work to do on the epidemiology and the economy and all that, which I'm interested in, of course. But I'm coordinating a meeting that I just had that was with 40 of our healthcare leaders from across the state, which meant the top people from Queens and Castle and HPH and Healthcare System of Hawaii and HMSA and Kaiser and the labs, and then all the people around them. Those are the people that are giving me guidance on what the right process to do is. Like I can tell you, please get your flu shot, don't uh, sneeze on people, don't cough on people. That's all good advice and wash things up clear the virus, which lasts minutes to hours on surfaces, do all that. But if I don't have the capacity to set broader policy by getting the lab tests into doctor's offices, by setting some of the quarantine standards in case somebody's traveled here and needs to be set aside for two weeks, if we don't have that healthcare advice from the top people, then we're dead in the water. Well, and so I wanted to be a part of that. As a result of your meetings now, if I need a test yes. or anyone needs a test, Will my ins health insurance cover it? I mean, is this something that's 
yes. in the plan? Yes, thank you for that question. I've gotten, I've gotten the full go ahead to tell people that their health insurance will cover it, as will Medicaid, as will Medicare. And the Department of Health is covering all the public health tests. So there should be no co-pays for anybody. And if someone is uninsured or indigent, we will not discriminate against them because they happen to be the unlucky soul that caught the flu or COVID-19. And because of course- Our last conversation, if you remember, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the fact that there, there was concern that people that didn't have any uh, means yes. to buy, uh, you know, service, maybe the most vulnerable to get uh, the infection. Well, God help us if, if uh, one of our homeless camps get infected and they then get swept by the mayor and they go to the wind and they end up seeing everybody all across the state. They're going to infect everybody. So, See, I mean, are there people thinking about the consequences of our policy that it's not business as usual with as far, at least as far as those kinds of activities are concerned? I think that's my job. Yes, I am. And my team of 40 people on our advisory council, and and we actually have, in addition to our healthcare advisory panel, we have a whole nother subset of people that we meet with. Uh, starting tomorrow at 7:30 in the morning, we're going to have an all healthcare provider call in. We'll have hundreds of healthcare providers that can call in and get this very information that I'm sharing with you today, so that they will know. You asked the question, how will patients know? Their providers will say, if you have these symptoms, call me and we can discuss whether or not you need a test. And of course, now there's social media to convey that and we will share that on uh, the main uh, news channels as well. So I happen to be telling you first, but that's just because you're so sexy and you're a former <laughs> governor. Yes. Oh, you sound like my wife. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I wish she would tell me that yeah. often, but anyway. But that's why we decided to do that. And so we have this group tomorrow morning, and it'll be every month, every sorry, every Tuesday morning at 7.30, where if doctors are in Ka'u, where I used to work, or if they're in Hana, or they're uh, on the night shift and they're not hearing everything, they will be able to get distilled information without a filter, just exactly what we're all experiencing, and they can ask questions. A lot of the proposals that I've shared with you today have actually come from our work group and it's the best ideas that this group of smart people have and who are passionate about our well-being and our healthcare have been giving me and my team for the last several days. So I appreciate the Gov um, putting me into this space and I know I push the edge of the envelope a lot to um, get these things going, but the truth is if we are proactive about a thing like COVID-19, we can keep it relatively at bay. Well, it, Lieutenant Governor, let me tell you something. When it comes to my, the health of my family and my neighbors and myself, push the envelope. Thank you. Do it, push it as far as you can go with it because, you know. Now, on the other hand, just because we have this test, we ought not to uh, have everybody go out and suddenly call their doctors the first thing in the morning and treat these tests the same way they were treating toilet paper about Good a point. week ago. You You're know? exactly right. There's there's always moderation and it's it, there's moderation in tests because you don't want to, one example is you don't want to test a thousand extra people that have no symptoms and get an unfortunate false positive. If you get a false positive, we could end up sending that poor soul into two weeks containment and home quarantine without any need. We would test them again, mind you, to make sure it wasn't a false positive, but there are reasons to test right, and we well, let's go through the symptoms again. Let, I, I want people to get this. If you're gonna, if you have these symptoms, call in for the test. Yes. If you don't, you know, put take your time in line. Uh, don't, don't panic. In other words, yes. So, okay, number one, fever. If you got a fever, you start thinking about the issue. Fever in 88% of all people who had COVID-19, they had a fever. If you have no fever, you're right off the bat pretty much in the clear. Number two, coughing. If you have a cough and it's new, it's not your chronic cough, you're not a smoker's cough, you just have a cough and fever, now you're talking. You probably have the flu, except now because of COVID-19, we're worried a little. And then finally, shortness of breath. If you're having a lot of trouble breathing, just please call 911 or go to the ER. We'll take care of you. We will check you for everything. That's fine. But when you have fever or cough or shortness of breath, you are on the list of potential for COVID-19. We will first check you for the flu. After checking that you have no flu, no flu at all, then we'll get a little bit more concerned. We'll ask a couple more questions. And now, because of the private labs, we'll test you for COVID-19. We'll tell you to go home for a couple of days and sleep, rest. 
If you get very sick, you go back to the hospital. If not, we'll call and tell you what your result is. That's the process. And it really doesn't sound complicated, but I'll tell you, it was very complicated to get these tests set up here in Hawaii through the private sector on well, short notice. We want to thank you for all the effort that you put into making that happen. Now, I, I know that you're, you, you are the primary focus uh, as far as the medical um, medical response uh, for the state of Hawaii. But since we, we got a few uh, couple minutes left, I know as, as Lieutenant Governor, you're also playing in the other issues. Um, what, what uh, is there any reason to be overly concerned on the, about the uh, economic impact uh, or the rest of it? I mean, are we going to see a day when there's a, what, what do you call it, uh, when we stop seeing flights from, say, Japan or China or anything like Great that? Great question. Right now, we're getting our guidance from the CDC. They have categories, level one, level two, and level three travel advisories. The f level four is they shut it down. That's what happened with China, okay? No so travel. China's shut down. China's shut down. Right now, we are not beyond any of the level three categories for anybody else. If there was a continued surge, if there was a continued surge in South Korea or Japan, then we start have to get, we have to get a little bit more concerned. I don't believe that's gonna happen. Italy shut down today on their own. Italy will not be having travelers leaving Italy until it's settled down and we've stopped transmitting COVID-19. We are looking at all of the concerns. We're making sure that no one comes in from China. We're making very uh, serious precautionary answers. We're getting answers about how to handle the cruise ships. We're being very careful about that because we're worried about our people. We're talking to the feds about that. And then finally, we're just using common sense. I'm getting all these notices from uh, the airlines saying that they're doing special filtration uh, tests and systems on, on the airplane to make sure that at least the air that's being circulated is pretty clean air and, and things like that. Uh, do those actually help? They help a lot. In the old days, there was no, no circulated air, and so you would really be putting everybody at risk. Now it's really just the people in the rows, two rows up in front of you and two rows in back. We're being specially cautious. Some people do one row. Hawaii's doing two. We're being careful. All I can say to you, Gov, is that you keep spreading the word, um, the word of watch out for fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Don't go to sick. Don't go to uh, work sick. Don't go to school sick. That's the kind of information you want to spread. You spread that word, you won't spread the virus. That's where we got to be. Well, Lieutenant Governor, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your accessibility and for your leadership on this issue. I, I can tell you that I feel a whole lot better that you came on our show today. Thank, thank you, Gov. You. you bet.